Let us open our Bible to the book of John 4. John 4, Christ revealed to the Samaritan woman. Christ revealed to the Samaritan woman. John 4, verse 3, Christ's departure to, into, into Galilee. Joshua applied himself more to preaching which was the main mission of his disciples. As we see in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 17. But this case was an exception of employing them to baptize with John the Baptist, to baptize the John the Baptist water baptism. He teaches us that the benefit of baptisms does not depend on the hand that administers them. This is seen in the apostles such as Peter, who preached and the new converts listening received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I quote. While Peter was still preaching these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. And of quote, this is quoting Acts 10 verses 44 to 46. John 4 verses 1 to 26, his discourse with the Samaritan woman. Verse 4. Samaria was sandwiched in between Judea uh, in the south and Galilee to the north. The Jews and the Samaritans had an extreme prejudice toward each other, dating back as far as 450 before Christ. They only had dealings as a last resort, and if uh, time and resources allowed, would probably go out of their way to minimize contact with each other. Yahshua's purpose in going through Samaria has to do with his broader mission. There was great hatred between the Samaritans and the Jews. Christ road from Judea to Galilee, as I said, lay through Samaria we should not go into places of temptation, but when our missions needs must, and then must not dwell in them, but hasten through them. Verses 4 to 6. We have here our Lord Yahshua under the common fatigue of travelers. Thus we see that he was truly a man. Toil came in with sin. Therefore Christ, having made himself a curse for us, submitted to it also. He was a poor man, and when all his journeys on foot, being wearied, he sat thus on the well. He had no couch to rest upon. He sat thus as people worried with, with traveling sit. Surely we should readily submit to be like the Son of God in such things as these. Verses 7 to 9. Going to the well was typically a task women did as a group. The fact that this woman goes alone says something about her reputation in the community. Christ asked the woman, for war. She was surprised because he did not show the anger of his own nation, the Jews, against the Samaritans. Moderate men of all sides are men wondered at. Yahshua's request for a drink from her is a breaking tradition for several reasons. In that Day and time, men generally did not talk with women in public. Rabbis did not talk to women, and Jews did not talk with Samaritans. Verse 10, Yahshua turns the tables with 
his response. At the beginning of this conversation, Yahshua is thirsty and the woman has the source to quench his thirst. Now Yahshua turns their talk to the fact that she is thirsty and he has the source to quench her thirst. The Greek phrase translated, a quote, living war, between quote, refers to a well fed by underground spring, one that always produces fresh water. Christ took the occasion to teach her divine things. He converted this woman by showing her her ignorance and sinfulness and her need of a savior. By this living water is meant the Holy Spirit. Under, under this comparison, the blessing of the Messiah had been promised to the Old Testament, in the Old Testament. The graces of the Holy Spirit and his comforts satisfied the thirsting soul that knows it, it, its own nature and necessity. Verses 11 to 14, like Nicodemus in, uh, in Luke 3 verse 4, the woman misses a spiritual truth and responds instead to what she sees as a physical impossibility. What Yahshua spoke figuratively, she took literally Christ shows that the water of Jacob's well yielded a very short satisfaction. Of whatever waters of comforts we drink, we will thirst again. But whoever partakes, partakes of the Holy Spirit of grace and the comfort of the gospel, Will never want, will never want what will abundantly satisfy his soul. Verse 15. The woman's response seems to be motivated by a desire for convenience. Would this living water, in verse 10, keep her from having to walk out to the well each day? Carnal hearts look no higher than carnal ends. We can see how ingenious the carnal mind is in shifting off conversations and keeping them from fastening in their hearts. But how closely our Lord Yahshua brings home the conviction to her conscience. He severely reproved her present state of life. Verses 16 to 19. The woman acknowledged the Yahshua to be a prophet. The power of his word in searching the heart and convincing the conscience of sacred things, secret things, is a proof of divine authority. It should cool our contests to think that the things we are striving about are passing away. Verses 20, verse 20. The woman's question about where people should worship seems to be a different track from the conversation up to this point. The Samaritans worshipped in Mount, in Mount Gerizim and the Jews worshipped on Jerusalem's Mount Zion. The object of worship will continue but still the same God is Yahweh the Father. But an end will be put to all differences about the place of worship. Reason teaches us to consult, to consult decency and convenience in the places of our worship. But Christianity gives no preference, no preference to one place above another in respect of holiness and approval with Yahweh. Verses 21 to 24. Yahshua responds to the woman's question with three truths. First, worship as she understands it will be rendered obsolete. Second, salvation springs forth out of Judaism. 
the source of the Old Testament scriptures and of the messianic promises uh, that, uh, that they, they contain. And third, through work, true worship, true worship is based not on location but on the condition of the worshippers heart. The Jews were certainly in the right. Those who by the scriptures have obtained some knowledge of Yahweh know whom they worship. The word of salvation was of the Jews. It came to other nations through them. Christ justly preferred the Jewish worship before the Samaritan. Yet here he speaks of the former as soon to be done away. Yahweh was about to be revealed as the father of, of all believers in every nation. The spirit or the soul of man, as influenced by the Holy Spirit, must worship Yahweh and have communion with him. Spiritual affections are shown in fervent prayers, supplications, and thanksgiving from the worship of, of an upright heart, in which Yahweh delights and he is glorified. Verse 26. The first person to whom Yahshua declare, declares his messiahship is a Samaritan, a woman, and a social outcast. The woman was disposed to leave the matter undecided till the coming of the messiah. But Christ told her, I quote, I, the one speaking to you, am he, end of quote. She was an alien and a, a hostile Samaritan, merely speaking uh, uh, to, 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 to her was, was thought to disgrace our Lord Yahshua. Yet to this woman, our Lord did reveal himself more fully than as yet he has done to any of his disciples. The lesson is, no past sins can bar our acceptance with, you, with Christ. If we humble ourselves before him, believing in him as being the Messiah, the Savior of the world. John 4 verses 27 to 42. The effects of Christ's conversation with the woman of Samaria. Verse 27. John makes the point that the disciples walked into the conversation as Yahshua was declaring himself to be the Messiah. The disciples wondered that Christ talked thus with a Samaritan and above all a woman. Yet they knew it was for some good reason and for some good end. Thus when particular difficulties when particular difficulties occur in the word and providence of Yahweh, it is good to satisfy ourselves that all is well that Yahshua the Messiah says and does. Verses 28 to 30. If the Greek word translated men means male human beings in this case, it can also mean people. It may indicate that the woman went to the men of the city because women in this culture did not hold any position of authority. Two things affected the woman. The extent of Yahshua's knowledge. Christ knows all the thoughts, words and actions and all the children of men. And the power of his word. Yahshua told her secret things secret sins with power. Her, he told her secret things, sins with power. She fastened upon that part of Christ's discourse. Many would think she would have been most shy of repeating. Look at this good example. But the knowledge of Christ unto which we are let by conviction of sin is most likely to be signed and saving. 
I point out the good example of this woman. She did not try to hide what the sins that Yahshua revealed on her. Instead, he went and he heralded it to the city. This is what we have to do with sin. This is what we have to do with demons when we have been, we have been delivered of them. So people of the village came to him. Those who want to know Christ must meet him where he records his name. Verses 31 to 33. The misunderstanding between Yahshua and the disciples regarding food is one that occurs throughout the Gospel of John. The things of the earth versus the things of heaven. Verses 37 to 38. Yahshua shares a key, a key thing to understanding the word of God. In his kingdom, there are some who sow and others who reap. And the word of God depends on both. Yahshua gives the disciples their commission, explaining that they will be reaping a crop for which they have not worked. This is the first of many times that Yahshua explains to the disciples their purpose. In fulfilling their calling, they are building on the works of others, Moses, Elijah. And obviously himself, Yahshua. Our master has left us an example that we may learn to do the will of Yahweh as he did. With diligence, as those who make a business of it, with delight and pleasure in it. Christ compares his work to harvest work. The harvest is appointed and looked to looked for before it comes so was the gospel harvest time is busy time all must be then at work harvest time is a short time and harvest work must be done then or not at all because when when rains comes it's over it's done so the time of the gospel is a season which if once a past cannot be recalled. Yahweh sometimes uses very weak and unlikely instruments for beginning and carrying on a good work. Our Savior by teaching one poor woman spreads the knowledge to the whole town. Blessed are those who are not offended at Christ. Those taught of Yahweh are truly desirous to learn more. It adds much to the praise of our love, to praise of our love to Christ and His Word. If it conquers prejudices, their faith grew. In the matter of it, they, did, they believed Him to be the Savior, not only of the Jews, but of the world. In the certainty of it, we know that this is indeed the Messiah. And in the ground of it, for we have heard him ourselves. John 4 verses 43 to 54. Christ heals the noble man's son. Verse 45. At first it seems that the Galileans believe in Yahshua. But their belief is based on the miracles uh, that Yahshua does rather than uh, who he is. Verses 46 to 47. The father was a nobleman, yet the son was sick. Honors and titles are no security from sickness and death. The greatest persons must go themselves to Yahweh, must become beggars. Verse 48, Yahshua's rebuke is in response to the fact that the people are looking for him to do his tricks, his, his signs and wonders. They will not believe in him based upon his word. Not the contrast with verse 42. The Samaritans believed based upon his word. 
verses 49 to 50. He didn't make any miracle in, uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, before the Samaritans, but they, they believed his word. Verses 49 to 50. The nobleman reveals the limitations he believes Yahshua faces. He asked Yahshua to, I quote, come down and I quote, before his child dies because they believe that after the death there is nothing Yahshua can do. Yet when Yahshua declares this child healed without being present with the child, the man believes. He believes Yahshua by his word now. The noble man did not stop from his request till he prevailed. But at first he discovered the weakness of his faith in the power of God. It is hard to persuade ourselves that distance of time and place are no hindrance to the knowledge, mercy and power of our Lord Yahshua. Understanding it, the first step to understand, understanding it is the first step to understanding spiritual things. Christ gave an answer of peace. Christ is saying that the soul lives, makes, makes it alive. The Father went his way, which showed the sincerity of his faith, makes it alive. The Father went his way, which shows uh, the sincerity of his faith. Being satisfied, this Father did not hurry home that night, but returned as one easy of his own mind. His servants met him with the news of the child, the child recovery. Good news would meet those who hope in Yahweh's word. Diligence in comparing the words of Yahshua with his, with his word will confirm our faith. And his bringing the cure to the family brought salvation to it. Thus, an experience of the power of one word of Christ may settle the authority of Christ in the soul. The whole family believed the likewise. wise. The miracle made Yahshua dear to them. The knowledge of Christ still spreads through families and people find health and salvation to their souls. Know this and the Lord Yahweh will bless you. Let us take these prayer points. Let us pray. If you knew the gift of Yahweh and who the person who asked ask you for a drink is, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water in the name of Yeshua. Everyone who drinks the ordinary water will be thirsty again in the name of Yeshua. But whoever drinks the water Yahshua gives them will never thirst in the name of Yeshua. Indeed, the water Yahshua gives us will become in us a spring of water welling up the, uh, to eternal life in the name of Yeshua. Prayer, Lord Yahshua, give me the living water so that I won't get thirsty again in the name of Yeshua. Lord Yahshua, give me the living water so that I won't get thirsty again. In the name of Yeshua, Lord Yahshua, give me the living water so that I won't get thirsty again. Thank you, Lord. All to your glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. The time has come when we worship Father Yahweh, neither on Mount Gerizim nor in Jerusalem, nor any other, other so-called sacred place. In the name of Yeshua. Gentile people worship what they do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation comes from the Jews. In the name of Yeshua. Yet the time has now come. When the true worshippers worship Father Yahweh. In the spirit and in truth. In the name of Yeshua. Worshippers in the spirit and in truth are the kind of worshippers Father Yahweh seeks in the name of Yeshua. Yahweh is spirit and his worshippers must worship in the spirit and in the truth in the name of Yeshua. When I am honored with the revelation of Yahshua, 
I will go and testify before people and call them to him for many will believe my testimony in the name of Yeshua take this as a prayer when I am honored with the revelation or deliverance of Yeshua I will go and testify before people and call them to him for many will believe my testimony in the name of Yeshua when I am hon honored with the revelation and deliverance of Yeshua I will go and testify before people and call them to him for many will believe my testimony thank you Lord all to your glory in the mighty name of Yeshua the Messiah we pray Yeshua has food to eat that people know nothing about in the name of Yeshua my food is to do the will of Yahweh who sent Christ and to finish his work in the name of Yeshua there is a saying it's still for